All right, welcome back. Now that you have your Google Drive organized and you understand the depth of knowledge wheel or at least are familiar with it to some extent, it's time to dig in a little bit and to use that as a tool to start building an assignment. So here we go. Here's the exciting part about differentiating. So as you can see, I've got uh, several units here from 2016 and 17 while I was teaching. And I'd like to show you one of the units that I differentiated using the ski slope analogy in my human impacts unit. Um, again, you can see how I'm organizing my files. Again, I think this is one of the most important things to be able to start building differentiated assignments is being able to find them. So we're going to look at an assignment that I called finding the culprit. So you can see I've got the three different assignments. I've already created them, but I'd like to walk you through how I got to this point of having three nicely neat, neat um, assignments. So Whenever building an assignment, I always start with the blue square because that's really the DOK level three or the strategic thinking and what I want the students like at a bare minimum to be able to do. So I always start with that blue square assignment. Now, in this example, the blue square assignment, like I said, is called finding the culprit. And what I want the students to learn is what is causing global warming. So I provide a website. It's a Bloomberg website here. Um, what's really warming the world? And so it's got several graphs where it takes the observed temperature and it measures or it compares them to different things that um, some people have said are affecting this increase in temperature. And really the goal is to find some correlation between the um, factors. And so what the students need to do is they need to scroll through the different graphs. They're going to have to read some of the little blurbs as well to kind of get some of the information. Um, and they have to just be able to use this website. So for some students, um, using the website might be a breeze. It might not be a problem at all. Some students, though, might be able to use it, but they might overlook some of the text that's on the assignment. Um, and other students, this might just be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So blue square, again, strategic thinking, DOK level three, meeting the expectation. What do I want them to do? Well, I want them to be able to look at the assignment and be able to read the, read the information on the website to gather information. So as they look at each graph, I want them to tell me, is it the Earth's orbit that's causing the warming? Is it the sun? Is it volcanoes? But within each of those, there's a blurb on the website that asks the students to, um, well, it provides information for them to learn more about the different factors. And so as they read that blurb, I want them to pull some of that information. So on the blue square, I'm going to ask them some of those questions. I'm going to ask them some questions that are related to those small paragraphs on the website. So as you can see here, I'm asking them yes or no. Are the two graphs correlated? And then to answer a question that is directly in this small paragraph below the title of the graph. Now, if this is the blue square, then I need to make it a little bit more straightforward for the green circle. I need to have this recall and um, building skills like reading a graph. So I want to take the pressure off of reading. So for this, I've actually created a fill in the blank for the answer to the question. Um, I'm still asking them yes or no. Is it this factor or not? Um, but again, you can see that there's a lot more helpful hints along the way. Instead of um, pulling the information from the website, they need to just be able to identify what the missing words are. And in this process, I'm hoping that they can also gain some information. But again, this is the green circle. They are partially proficient by completing this assignment. And so I want to really give them a assignment that they can complete. And that's really the goal of the green circle. The green circle is not for all of your students. It's not even for mo like half of your students. It's for very few. It's for the students that don't even know where to begin. The students that are overwhelmed by the assignment or the students that haven't been in class and they just need something to get going and to start building their confidence or students that don't turn anything in. It's a great confidence builder to help teach students how to complete an assignment and turn it in. I've learned that sometimes that's all students need. But for those students that are ready to go, then the blue square is where they should begin. The blue square is going to ask them to, you know, dig in and get some information from the assignment. The black diamond is going to challenge them a little bit more. So I'm going to ask them some more questions that are going to ask them to read even deeper into the information. So this is one way you can use like an online resource to build an assignment. Um, but I would like to show you one other example of an assignment. So for this one, this one is... Um, another differentiated assignment. This one is in my chemistry unit. So again, my chemistry folder, and this one is called eating and breathing chemistry. So again, you can see my three assignments here um, and an example here of the blue square assignment. Again, my proficient assignment that if a student completed this, they got a proficient grade. Um, 
is I'm using, you can see I've used bold to kind of identify some of those keywords that are in the DOK wheel so students know the task that I'm asking them to do. And it also identifies the depth of knowledge as well and it really is, makes it very clear. So in this example, we've got our blue square assignment. Um, I want them to compare and label um, each of these as either a chemical reaction or a physical change to explain the difference between the two, define the law of conservation of mass, uh, to write the chemical formula for respiration, identify the products and explain um, how the chemicals are released, and then to go on and talk about the carbon cycle and then develop a logical argument to explain why plants are so important to animals. So if a student could answer this, then awesome, they are proficient. Now let's take a look at how similar but yet different the green circle and blue square are. So the green circle, I want them to just continue to work on those skills to develop that recall and to identify the things that are um, skills that we've been practicing. So again, there's gonna be more of these chemical reactions or physical changes because this is one of the more foundational tasks in this unit. Again, I want them to define the law of conservation of mass, which they can find in their science notebooks. Um, but instead of having them write out the chemical formula, I'm providing it for them. And I'm asking them to do something like draw a square around the reactants and a circle around the products. So again, labeling things. Um, then I want them to actually identify the products. So you can see I'm spending more time on identifying the products and the reactants. These are more foundational type skills. Again, they're still going to have to ask, answer questions about the carbon cycle. But they're much more specific and less open-ended. And so it's just here. It's not asking why are the two plants and animals important to each other. So if we go from the blue square then to the black diamond, the black diamond has much fewer uh, questions or chemical equations here to ask if it's a chemical reaction or a physical change because they should have mastered this. So then I want them to create their own formula to show the physical change of gold melting from a solid to a liquid to make sure they understand the difference between chemical reaction and physical change. Then I give them something else that's um, something that we did in class that's not related or I'm not providing the chemical formula for, but to give me some evidence why vinegar and baking soda is a chemical reaction. Conservation of mass, again, I'm asking them about this topic again, but instead I'm asking them a little bit more of a thought-provoking, extended thinking type question. And then finally, the carbon cycle, instead of just asking them an open-ended question, I'm asking them to create a diagram so that they can really illustrate this. So I hope you can see the difference between the three assignments